Hello everyone, so we're going to talk about the force of interest. So the force of interest is defined as the derivative of the accumulation function divided by the accumulation function. So let's just take some time to analyze what exactly this definition means. So let's just consider an example, uh, investment A, you know, we have time t equals to t0. So for investment A, it's experiencing a growth of positive $1 per year. So it's earning that much, and in, it's earning interest at this, at this rate. And at that moment, you have $5. And for investment B, it's experiencing a growth of plus one as well per year. And at that moment, you have $10. So if I were to ask you, which one of these investments is better? Which one would you choose? Now the answer is actually A. A is the better one. And why is that? Now when we when we consider which investment is better, normally we will consider how much it's growing, right? But in both of these cases, it's both growing at the same rate. So if they're both growing at the same rate, we start to compare how much investment we need to experience this growth. So for A, we only need $5. We need $5 to experience this growth. Well, for B, we need $10 to experience this growth. So it's obviously A is much better than B because we need less money to experience this growth. So using this example, I'm hoping to illustrate the fact that to, uh, to measure whether investment is good, we need to take into account two things. So first, we need to take into account the growth, which is the A prime here, here and also the amount of investment. And in this case, the smaller the investment, the better. Such as here, we need less money to experience, to experience this kind of growth. So we need to come up with a number that takes, it, takes into account both these information. And that's, that is exactly how we came to the definition of force of interest. It takes into account two pieces of information, the rate of growth and the amount of investment and then it combines these two pieces of information and it gives you a number called the force of interest that tells you uh, how well an investment is performing so uh, this number the bigger the better so uh, with the force of interest the first natural question to ask is given the force of interest how do we get back the accumulation function? So to do that, we'll have to do, solve a differential equation. So let me just open a new sheet. So let's just start with the definition. So now we have to solve a differential equation. So let's just take the integral from t1 to t2. Now a prime of t is just the derivative of a goes of t1 to t2. Oops, sorry. Okay, the pen went crazy. Wait, let me just get rid of that. Okay, that did not happen. So going back, t1 to t2, uh, 1 over a t. <laughs> okay, so what's the next step? So I know if you solve these kinds of differential equations, some people sort of abuse the notation and say that these dt's cancel each other out. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that, but just know that this is a abuse of notation. What uh, what we're actually doing, we're actually doing substitution. And after doing the substitution, we'll arrive at new bounds. And now the integ integration will be in terms of at. So just keep in mind this is a views of notation. <laughs> and so when you see this integral, I hope it reminds you of this. They just recall that this is equal to this. And so this integral is going to be equal to the natural log of at. It goes from at1 to at2. Now at this point, I hope you can recall your logarithmic properties 
and just remember the difference between two logarithms. We can express this as a ratio. And so we're at our space. So let me just let me just copy where we left off. So on the left hand side we had this integral. And on the right we were up to the actual logarithm right here at the end. So what is the next step? So let's just take both of these terms to the power e to the power of both these terms. So e to the power of a natural logarithm, I'll just get back this term right, because that's the definition of a logarithm. So on the right, the same old boring t1 to t2. Now let's just consider the times. Let's just say t2 is equal to some t, and t1 is equal to 0. And now don't forget a0 is actually equal to 1, because that's the definition of accumulation function. We're measuring how much uh, the investment grows given an initial investment of 1. So if we, go, if we start from a0, the amount is always equal to 1. So let's, let us just plug in these numbers. a t2, we, we'll just get back a t. a uh, divided by a0, a0 is just 1, so I'll just omit that. And this side will turn into this. And so there we have it. So we've solved our differential equation and we've found our AT. So what we have done is that given a certain force of interest, we can use this formula to find the accumulation function. And uh, this formula is going to be come in handy in several occasions. In SOA exams, they tend to give you these, uh, give you really whack functions for the force of interest and all you have to do is just plug it into this formula and then you can get back your accumulation function. So that's all that is. So uh, that is for this video and I'll see you in the next